Thank you for joining us. We are now ready to begin. We would like to welcome Executive Vice Chancellor Elizabeth Simmons to give a short opening remarks. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. It's a great pleasure to join you for our 11th Annual Integrity Awards Ceremony, honoring the many ways Triton serve as champions of academic, professional, and personal integrity. Integrity is a core principle here at UC San Diego, as it really must be for a research university. All research and academic work depends on the reliability of scholarship, the honest examination of evidence, and candid discussions. We can only create, discover, and transmit knowledge if our methods and approaches are founded in the truth. Now, integrity can come under exceptional pressure in the face of hardship, and maintaining it is therefore especially crucial during challenging times like the ones we've been experiencing. And it's crucial in the ways that we keep our promises to one another and in our efforts to build a just community for all, which as we've seen in the events of the last year, pursuing a just community for all is ever more important and it requires integrity to stand up for what's right. So to that end, I'd like to extend congratulations and special thanks to this year's award recipients for everything they have done to uphold an environment for learning and discovery where all Tritons are empowered to do the right thing, even when that's not the easy thing to do. Our award recipients today represent students, faculty, and staff who are leading by example, who are inspiring others to promote ethics and integrity in research, in the classroom, and in life beyond. So now it's my pleasure to return the floor to our host to start the program and introduce our wonderful honorees. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Vice Chancellor Simmons for your opening remarks. Now we will hear from alumna Penelope Zhu. Hi everyone, I'm Penelope. Uh, I'm an alumni from UC San Diego. I worked as a peer educator at Academic Integrity Office for two and a half years before my graduation. Um, so this is my first time speaking at an in Integrity War Ceremony. Very happy to be here. But when Trisha first contacted me and asked me to talk about integrity out here, uh, outside of school, I was like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean by integrity out here? Because after graduation, I just, I haven't heard, of, heard the word integrity that much anymore. When I was at UCSD, there was this clear policy, there is this clear standard, every professor had syllabus, had their own rules in the classroom. And I just hung around AIO a lot. Like I was either at AIO or I was on my way to the AIO. So it was really easy back then. But since I graduated, my day, I'm a programmer. So my day really is just my daily task, my daily result, me checking in with my supervisor, and that's about it. So when I was struggling to come up with something to talk about with integrity out here, I remember the pillars at our office, at least when I was still there, um, they didn't actually say no cheating on exams. They didn't say no copying other people's homework. They said responsibility, respect, trustworthiness, fairness, honesty, and courage. And those are not policies. Those are not rules. Those are not, stand, uh, those are not exams and homeworks. Those are consistent standards that I can hold my own behavior to in any circumstances. And then I realized even after graduation and especially after graduation, I'm still making the same choices as I was in school, except under different contexts. At school, it was, should I be responsible and finish my homework or should I value my friendship and go hang out with my friends at her birthday party? Should, but now outside of school, my question is, should I be responsible to my work and pull an overtime and finish this task that I'm supposed to finish today? Or should I be responsible to my family and check out phone time just so I can spend time with my family? Should I value my personal safety 
and stay safe in the face of conflict? Or should I have the courage to stand up against discrimination and injustice, even though it meant I might get tear gas all over my face? And those questions, I'm still using the same tools to answer them that I learned at UCSD. What does my gut tell me? What is more important? What is my long-term goal? What is the most benefit to me? And those are not just limited to academic sense anymore. Those are not just for my own learning and teaching and for my GPA, for my student record. These questions now are answered. Those an answers are based on my relationship with my family, my friends, my, re my reputation at work, sometimes even how I see myself, like my own place in this world. And it's not easy. It's so much bigger and so much more comprehensive, but also vague without a school, without exam, without homework to compare yourself to others because you are checking in with yourself now. Like you are the only one holding yourself uh, to the standards now. Nobody else is hovering over you to make sure you are doing these things. And, but I'd like to think of it as kind of like a diet. It's very hard. It's very difficult. Everybody says it's good. Very few, very few people do it, but you know it's good for you. You know it's important for you. You know it's a lifetime habit that will improve your, your life quality. And just like diet, integrity is really hard to be consistent about. I slipped up. I know everybody slips up, and, but it doesn't really stop you from at there. It, as long as you recover with a good strategy, with a right strategy, it only strengthens you. And over time, sometimes people even laugh at you saying, why are you doing this? There's no point. But over time, you will see there is a good, like it gives the, your life such a better quality. It gives your life such better meaning that I think the integrity out here, to me, it's almost like it's transformed from just an academic sense to a basis, to a foundation, to all my choices and decisions in life. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Penelope, for those remarks. Now we are going to reveal the winners of our annual Excel with Integrity Art Contest. Each year, students are invited to use their creativity to tell us why integrity is important to them. Congratulations to our contest winner, Hannes Stu and runner-up, Marian Badria, and a big round of applause to our honorable mentions, Anika Sharma and Kira Tran. After our ceremony, we will feature all finalists are on our website. We would now like to welcome Dita Mara to Savoya with some brief remarks. And good afternoon. I am very happy to be here. I have to tell you that I was several months ago contacted by the wonderful people in the Office of Academic Integrity with a question. They asked me, would cheating in college invariably and inevitably lead to rejection from medical school? And that question led us to an interesting discussion that day, and I think actually led to my uh, invitation to join you today with these Integrity Awards. Um, I am not an ethicist, I'm not a philosopher. You're looking at a biology major, but I have been a, a, a physician for more years than I'd like to mention and uh, been in the Dean's office at the School of Medicine for 30 years, uh, going, seeing students come through medical school 
and, uh, and worrying and looking at medical education. And so I can talk to you from that perspective. You know, the answer to the question of the, was uh, cheating inevitably and, uh, and uh, uh, invariably uh, a no-go for medical school. Um, my answer was knowledge deficits are easy to correct, and they are, but a lack of integrity is much more problematic and much harder to fix. So we would very much prefer people with integrity who maybe have had a misstep and you know, have not done so well on a test to someone who actually thought that they would be better off by doing the cheating to get the grade. The grades are much less important uh, than, than the integrity to us. There's absolutely no question. So when I was preparing my remarks today, for you, I did what all good students these days do when they try are trying to research something. I Googled integrity and I came up with a definition, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, being whole. And I thought that that was actually that, that spin on integrity I thought was very interesting because it is about being whole, but I also think Having integrity is about staying whole because it keeps us intact when we all are true to our own core and true to our own principles. And it is about having one set of principles, one way of acting, whether people are knowing, people are watching, there are outside, the outside influences, or no one is watching, no one is seeing what we are ending up doing. So I was asked today to comment on the importance of integrity in my own personal and professional life and why it's important that we recognize integrity in others. And I have to tell you, in my personal life, integrity allows me to put my head on the pillow at night and get a good night's sleep. Because if I wonder at night if I've acted according to my own principles, I don't get a good night's sleep. And as Penelope said, we all have challenges and every day we have challenges to our integrity. So how we face those challenges, again, allows us either to rest comfortably or not so comfortably, at least for me. In my professional life, having integrity allows both my patients and my colleagues to trust me because without that trust, I am dead in the water. No one pays attention to me. No one no one listens to what I, uh, I am asking them to do. And I really do believe in the, long, in the short run, we can lack integrity and fool others. But in the long run, there's no fooling going on. If one lacks integrity, one loses the trust of those we care the most about. Um, and in my professional life, that is my patients and my colleagues. And both of them are incredibly important to my doing my work with any kind of excellence. Um, trust is incredibly important and integrity builds trust. And working in a system with integrity, a system with strong moral principles, a system that upholds its own values because the individuals within that system are upholding the values of the system also is incredibly important. It's, it is critical to the effective functioning of everyone within that system, because once integrity starts to slide, uh, it, people have a much harder time themselves being able to go to bed at night and put their heads on the pillow. So as others have mentioned, this has been a very challenging year. I think that the question uh, to me initially was prompted because of some issues with some cheating on the undergraduate ca campus. Uh, and we know that there are lots of pressures for students to excel and to perform. We know there are lots of pressures on faculty members to, uh, to, to be kind to their students, to do their best for their students, to help their students uh, to perform well. And all of us were challenged in doing that, I think, in this year. Um, it's, it's shown us that having integrity really isn't easy. 
And there are challenges both in our personal and professional lives every day. And those challenges, again, as Penelope pointed out, I think so, so well, oftentimes is actually because there's conflict between two things that are of a benefit to us. And how we, benefit, how we balance those benefits, how uh, we see one moral system and, and the other moral system uh, and, and what comes to the fore in that situation is really very important to our own personal integrity. It isn't about always doing good. It is about which good is the right good at the right time and for what is the right reason. And those things can be very, very hard sometimes to judge. How we balance the conflicts that cause us to have challenges to our integrity oftentimes takes great courage. So today, we applaud those who had the courage to tell both themselves and others the truth. I wanted to add my congratulations to our colleagues. And I really believe that today's awards are the highest awards that a university can bestow on both its students and its faculty and its staff. So congratulations to you all. And thank you very much for including me in this ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Emerita Savoya. Because we were unable to hold the ceremony last year, we would like to recognize our 2020 Integrity Champions. Champion Cheryl Harrelson. To me, integrity is being honest, consistent in actions and fair. Wherever I go, these are the characteristics I aim to leave behind in the minds of others. However, integrity is not just how others see you, but how you conduct yourself when no one else is looking. Acting with integrity means that I can look in the mirror every day and feel good about who I am and what I have done. As someone in a position of authority, it is ultimately my responsibility to be a model for those around me. To whom much is given, much is required. Champion Isabel Rivera Colasso. The path towards UC San Diego's mission to transform society must be carved with a commitment to ethical behavior. Acting on these ideals is harder than writing about them or aspiring to achieve them. Proactive engagement with integrity and ethics will enable us to become agents of positive change in our communities and research locations. It is only through integrity that the UC San Diego community will make the global impact we aspire to and enable us to truly use our knowledge and creativity to positively impact the world. Integrity inspires trust, and trust changes the world. Congratulations to our 2020 Integrity Champions. We would now like to introduce Vice Chancellor Brown to present a special Lifetime Achievement Award. Hello, I'm Sandra Brown, the Vice Chancellor for Research, and it is my privilege to congratulate Dr. Michael Kalichman on receiving a special UC San Diego Integrity Champion Lifetime Achievement Award. Dr. Kalichman has been engaged in research ethics for over 30 years as the director of the UC San Diego Research Ethics Program. He has helped to develop, helped to identify and address ethical challenges that are intrinsic to academic scholarship 
and has worked to foster learning about research ethics. Michael is also the founding director of the community-based San Diego Research Ethics Consortium and co-founding director for the Center for Ethics in Science and Technology. <clears throat> Dr. Kalichman has taught research ethics workshops throughout the United States and across the globe. He's been instrumental in advocating for research ethics to be more than just courses. They are the cultural values of our academic citizens that need to be embraced by leadership and organizations. Over the years, Dr. Kalichman has received grants from the National Institutes of Health and the National Science Foundation to study patient privacy and ethics within science. His current grant from the National Science Foundation is designed to investigate how to best empower faculty to create a culture of ethics in the field of engineering. He is also deeply committed to bringing questions of ethics and integrity to the public for their discussion. He's partnered with the Reuben H. Fleet Science Center on a monthly Exploring Ethics series and has worked with the Altman Clinical Trial, Clinical and Translational Research Institute's Community Resources Director to improve the understanding and participation in clinical trials. I've had the good fortune of working with Mike for over a decade, and I have seen his thoughtful approach in practice. I have turned to Mike to discuss challenging situations in, re in the research ethics arena, and he always has helped to bring a broad, a reasoned, and a humane framework to the complex challenges that we face in the world of multidisciplinary and cutting edge science, where technologies often precede policy. So my deepest congratulations to Mike and to all the Integrity Champion Award recipients. Your dedication to upholding the integrity and the ethical standards are needed now more than ever as we continue to bring our science out to the public good. Your efforts are deeply appreciated. Thank you. Congratulations again to Mike Halishman. The entire university thanks you for your years of service to integrity and ethics. It is now time to present our 2021 Integrity Champions. Champion Sahar Badachi. Champion Hui Hui Chi. And champion Kurt Schurgers. In a community with integrity, healthy work culture is established and supported by everyone. In the educational section of a university, faculty and students need to work together to achieve this goal. Cheating is often done because the opportunity is there and we really don't want to create an environment where good students feel that they have to do something else, they have to cheat to keep up with the people who do. The motivation to use you know, uh, our exam as an assessment, I see that I'm actually fulfilling my responsibility and gaining trust from the students to maintain the students' motivation on true learning. In the past, majority of us had written exams as a way for assessing students' understanding. The oral assessment is a conversation or dialogue style format, and the nature of oral assessment will allow adaptive questions. The feedback we provide the students provide a resource to guide students to success. Being honest and doing the right thing is a very, very hard thing to do. It takes a big commitment uh, not to cheat, and, and I really applaud our students for doing that. Yeah, and especially in this environment, right, where it is supposedly so much easier to cheat, you should really exactly. applaud. Everything the is there the for them to do the wrong thing. Uh, all the opportunities are there, and then when they don't do it, and then they do the right thing, it means a lot. Our students are future engineers, and the decisions they make uh, is going to have a very big impact 
on general and public welfare and safety even. It, it's important for them to make ethical decisions. So integrity that's practiced through their academic career will be directly helping them to form the identity of engineer. It's important that as society we can trust engineers and we can trust scientists. The public trust in science and engineering isn't at an all-time high. It is definitely important for engineers and scientists to actually behave ethically so that we can re-establish that trust. We would now like to introduce Andrew Griggs to present our next champion, Michael Hogarth. Hello, my name is Andrew Greaves. I serve as the Enterprise Cloud Architect for Information Services, and I've had the distinct pleasure of working with Dr. Mike Hogarth since his arrival to UC San Diego Health in 2017 as the Clinical Research Information Officer and as his role as the Director of Biomedical Informatics for the Altman Clinical and Translational Research Institute, known as ACQRI. Dr. Hogarth provides leadership for UC San Diego Health working tirelessly to bring people, technology, and academics together for solutions to complex healthcare and research problems. Everyone who's interacted with Dr. Hogarth knows that he lives by a strong personal code of ethics and integrity. But he doesn't just live integrity, he models and guides it for others to follow ethical principles in their own works. This has been especially critical during the worldwide pandemic of COVID-19. With the urgency of the situation, it's often tempting to take shortcuts. He actively leads others in keeping to established methods of protecting privacy and safety of individuals while helping transition research successfully into clinical practice. Congratulations, Mike Kogar. Hello. Next, champion Stephanie Fraley. Integrity is like a muscle. It must be exercised every day on decisions big and small to maintain strength of character. Through consistency and self-discipline, practicing integrity allows others to know that you can be relied upon, to strive for the highest standards of ethical behavior, rigor, and truth in everything that you do. When it's difficult and unpopular, even when there are negative consequences, and even though it's impossible to reach perfection. In this way, integrity and engineering are linked. Engineers are called to improve the human condition, and this is only possible if others can trust us. To exhibit moral courage, we cannot just do what we feel is right or wrong. We must be able to reason, round our reasons in the social contract, and act. Moral courage must be exhibited when times are good so that one can also act with courage when times are difficult. Courage is the key to integrity. Champion Jim Short. Integrity is the guiding principle that creates a positive, formative, and impactful environment for student learning. Academic integrity reminds students that personal topics of interest can be explored to produce novel understandings of the world around us, as well as solutions to our most urgent problems. Similarly, professional integrity maintains the caliber of excellence that benefits our students, whether in response to developments within a particular field of study or the pressing needs of COVID's transition to virtual learning Academic integrity propels faculty, staff, and students alike to stay abreast of changes and make meaningful transformations to pedagogy, syllabi, and policy. It is this professional integrity that perpetuates our university as an up-to-date beacon of higher learning. In short, integrity matters to the UC San Diego community because it defines the university experience for every student and provides the foundation for the transformative journey of education. It is only through integrity that we can have excellence. Champion Ross Turner. 
On more than one occasion in my professional engineering career, I have been asked to do something that questioned my values or had the potential to harm others. In these situations, I look at the order of the engineer ring that I have worn since graduating from UC San Diego and remember the oath that I swore to conduct myself ethically, honorably, and respectfully in everything that I do. Now, as a graduate student, I'm called to focus on the ethical questions that are generated by my research in high energy laser systems. I see my responsibility to not only abide by the expected or codified ethical standards, but to educate myself and others on the downstream ethical implications of the technology. By bringing a greater awareness to the thought process and the questioning of traditional methods, I aim to spur deeper ethical discussions and show that even as students, we can evolve the culture into something worthy of the oath to which so many of us have sworn. This ring is my integrity reminder. Champion Brian Lee. Integrity, especially in my line of work, when I publish something, I know that it's, it's right. And so when I push this out specifically for the warfighter in the field, they're getting good information and when they see a specific spectrum, that is the spectrum of a degraded IED and not something else. The pandemic has been a real challenge for teaching a lab class and giving as best of an experience as we can and not holding 2,000 people back a year because they can't get this lab in. You can always have fun and work hard. And I think that's really the key. You can work hard and still have fun. For me, I always imagine that my grandfather, who passed away some years ago, is always watching whatever I do. I don't want to let him down. Uh, he was a big factor in my life, and uh, he always had integrity, and so I want to make sure I live up to his example. Once again, congratulations to all the 2021 Integrity Champions. Thank you for joining us. The chat is now open for you to express congratulations to all of today's awardees and contest finalists. We invite everyone to enjoy a final slideshow featuring short videos and photos of past awardees and contest winners. Oh, dear. No! Oh! Oh! 
I'll never cheat again. I'll be an honest, trustworthy, fair, respectful and responsible student. Do you mind if I can copy one of your assignments? Never! Helps you discover who you are.